paleo, keto, Mediterranean, which is the best diet? In this video, we will discuss none of those. Hi there, and welcome to Gimme Two. My name is Mark, and in this video, we will be discussing nutrition in just two minutes. As with my other videos, if you're interested in going straight to the two minutes, which discusses the three macronutrients and the role that they play in our nutrition, that is timestamped in the description. But if you stick around for a couple of minutes before that, I go through some context like why we need nutrition in order to function. Practically applying nutrition is a very daunting task, with crash diets and conflicting studies being thrown in our direction. While this video is not intended to be a practical guide for daily nutrition, for that there are many health professionals that have studied this very deeply, it is intended to provide a foundational understanding of how our bodies produce the energy that we need. Philosophy aside for this video, the dictionary definition of biological life is an organismic state with the capacity for metabolism, growth, reaction to stimuli, and reproduction. In order to do these things, we need to carry out certain essential functions, like respiration or digestion, all of which require energy. The energy our bodies use for just these essential functions is called basal energy expenditure. Any additional activity, from smiling to standing up to more intense forms of exercise, require additional energy and will raise our metabolism, which is the rate at which we use energy. Just like a phone battery drains faster when the phone is in use than when it's inactive, and might even function at a lower level to preserve battery life when running low, so too with living things. We use energy faster the more active we are, and we don't perform at our best when we're running low, so we need to recharge. The currency humans use for energy is called adenosine triphosphate, and the fuel we use to make this energy is measured in calories. The average person's resting or basal metabolism is roughly 1300 calories per day and is largely dictated by genetics and age, but it can be raised with increases in muscle mass. Our actual caloric burn, however, is very dependent on factors like lifestyle, level of activity, etc. Calories, which are either converted into energy immediately or stored in our body for use later on, are ingested through food and drink and delivered in the form of three macronutrients, carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Overconsuming calories can result in a variety of health issues. For example, Excess sugar in the blood can lead to diabetes, and excess fat in our system can lead to weight gain, hormone imbalance, or circulatory and cardiovascular issues. These increase our chances for high blood pressure, strokes, and heart attacks. There are dietary guidelines that are updated every five years, but different people have different needs. So, as mentioned earlier, it's best to follow the advice of health professionals. It is, however, sage advice to, generally speaking, eat natural, nutrient-rich, unprocessed foods. While all calories convert to energy, how that happens and the roles that they serve in our body differ based on the macronutrients that provide them. So let's discuss how our bodies use the macronutrients for energy in the two minutes. Before we do, however, if you find this video interesting, entertaining, or informative, please consider liking, subscribing, hitting the bell, commenting, all of those good things. This allows you to stay up to date with my releases and allows videos like these to reach wider audiences. But now, let's get that two minutes started now. Carbohydrates provide four calories per gram. They can be used immediately, stored as glycogen for quick use later on, or converted to fat for longer term reserves. Carbs are categorized into simple carbs that digest quickly and include sugar, honey, and juices, complex carbs that digest slower and provide sustained energy and include grain foods, and fiber, which is not digested, slows nutrient absorption, keeping us fuller longer, and is found in whole grains, nuts, and beans. Digesting carbohydrates gives us glucose, which can be converted to ATP through a complex process called cellular respiration or anaerobic respiration. Fats provide a denser form of energy at 9 calories per gram. 
They also keep us warm, protect our organs, and aid in the absorption of vitamins and minerals, productions of hormones, and insulation of nerve fibers. Fats are categorized into saturated fats, which may increase the risk of heart disease, unsaturated fats, which have been linked to heart health benefits, and trans fats, which should generally be avoided. Digesting fats gives us fatty acids and glycerol. Fatty acids are then converted into molecules that can either join into the carb ATP process or convert to ketones, which convert to ATP via an alternate process. Proteins like carbs provide four calories per gram. They provide the building blocks of all bodily tissues and are used as energy as a last resort in the absence of fats and carbs. Protein digestion gives us amino acids, which can either be reconfigured in the body to build necessary tissue or further broken down to join into the fat and carb ATP process. And that is how we use macronutrients for our nutrition. Again, this video is not intended to be practical. It is there for you to understand how foods and drink provide us with the energy we need to survive. I found it very informative researching the information for this video, and it even provided a lot of introspection into my own nutrition. I hope that learning about this topic can help you do introspection on your nutrition and that you can join me in another video. Thanks for watching.